Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about how to talk, communicate with your spirit guides. Before we do that though, if you watched my last video, Flow with the Tao, I talked about how, you know, if you flow with the energy of the moment, you will be doing the most productive thing you could possibly do in the moment. Well, to share with you here, so today, another day of feeling like shit, all right, I, I was hanging out here most of the day, crying, you know, uh, that's something, you know, we'll talk about, we'll address maybe in, in future videos. Nevertheless, feeling like absolute shit, to say the least. And was full of, you know, sadness and, 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 and so on and so forth. And, uh, you know, making videos was absolutely not on the menu at all. At all. Uh, and, uh, well, now it's a different energy. Now I am quite in the zone, ladies and gentlemen. And so it's evening. It's, uh, you know, past sunset at this point. And, uh, well... I gotta honor the flow of the Tao, the flow of the moment. So really, you know, that's for me just another confirmation. The energies change throughout the day, let alone throughout the week, let alone throughout the month. So pay attention. So now, how do you communicate with your spirit guides? Well, I am going to give you my methodology because as of late, uh, last few days, I have been uh, communicating with the soul fam again and I have been communicating with my one of my spirit guides. The, I would say this is the, the one that I sort of uh, talk to uh, directly, one-on-one. -on -one. And I guess he sort of uh, figures the rest of it out, talks it out with a squad or something. Uh, but he's definitely the one that I am in direct communication with. And his name is Maximus. And uh, Maximus and I uh, used to communicate quite a lot back in the day. You know, a, a few years ago, we used to communicate quite frequently, almost daily. And uh, there were times where I would ask Maximus to do something for me, like, uh, you know, uh, put me in the... Like one time I asked him to... There was this cute girl in the gym... And she had been eyeing me and I had been eyeing her. So I told Maximus, look, I'm going to the gym tomorrow. Uh, could you put me in a situation where it's kind of nice to approach her? And uh, what do you know? The next day she, I was stretching. She comes and she uh, puts a mat next to me. And uh, before you know it, I, uh, I had her number. But we never ended up going out on a date. Nevertheless, uh, I was starting to ask. Maximus of things like that, you know, you know, things and it would just like m magically happen, you know, and uh, uh, You know his point at the time was to uh, Show me that he's for real that this is for real and so I guess that's why he was sort of uh, manipulating reality like that in, in those Circumstances where I would ask him, you know, it's almost like I was asking him show me that you this is all true show me that this exists spirits exist you you're actually real and your name is maximus or at least that's how i like to refer to him as uh maybe that's his astral name maybe that's just the name that i refer to him and he's a, he's an old buddy he's an old friend of mine he's somebody who i mean uh he's kind of my best buddy actually he's he's in many ways my best friend and uh you know when they tell you your kids and you have imaginary friends i mean those are your friends Okay, and you know, kids speak to their imaginary friends all the time. Uh, but you do have friends. You do have friends, and you'll once you actually communicate with them, you'll quickly find that they're they're your besties. You know, they're your besties. They're your best friends. So Maximus and I were old buddies. We incarnated so much in and out of uh, in and out of incarnations. We've been together on Earth. We've been together in the astral plane, and we sort of like to look out for one another. And uh, so I used to communicate with Maximus a lot back in the day, a few years ago. 
Uh, and uh, I just kind of stopped communicating for a while. You know, I just stopped communicating. And uh, I, uh, kind of, I just kind of uh, wanted to bring back that communication again. Uh, and I started communicating again. And I have a methodology. I will share it with you. Uh, so you could also begin to speak to your uh, spirit guides and uh, get some guidance and, and just get some company if you feel like you want some company. So my methodology, I'm just telling you the way I do it, uh, is I, uh, I don't know how I found out about Maximus's name. Uh, I just did. So I shout out the name, and I guess in your case, if you don't have a name or some something to call your spirit guides, I mean, make up a name or they'll answer. You know, make up a name or just say spirit guide or something. I say Ma the name of Maximus three times. I say Maximus, Maximus, Maximus. And then the way that I know that Maximus is here is I uh, start to giggle. Because Maximus is one hilarious being. He's absolutely hilarious. And uh, the way I know that he's around is when I, I start to laugh. Like today, for example, I uh, was riding on my bike. Very, very sad. You know, very, very sad. I had been crying before. Very sad. And uh, I just wanted to, to see that my uh, old friend's still here. So I said Maximus's name three times. And uh, I start to laugh. You know, I start to giggle, even though I'm feeling this sadness. And uh, uh, so, you, you might think, well, oh, blah, 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 you know. Sometimes I call the name three times and there's no giggle. There's just no answer that he's not there or I, when I'm, I'm not able to connect with him. I'm not, it's like making a call and, you know, missed call. So it, it's not always, it's not always. But I know if I say his name three times and he starts, I start to laugh. It's that's his presence. That's he's, he's saying, hello, I'm here. So, that's how I summon, or that's how I call. I mean, I mean I, summon is not the, the most optimal word here. That's how I make the phone call. Because you're literally just making a phone call to the astral plane. These beings are around you all the time. So, this is how I initiate the call. And again, there are times where there's this missed call, no answer. Uh, although more often than not, there is an answer. So... Uh, now, when you do this, you want to be in the absolute most comfortable place possible for you. So, if you're around somewhere where you're not comfortable speaking with so-called imaginary friends, that's not going to work. The, 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 the call is not going to work. The communication is not going to work. So, for me currently, the most comfortable place that I'm uh, in to make these uh, these calls is right in my room, honestly. Like it's, you know, I'm in this hut here. It's pretty quite isolated, but I'm still not comfortable doing it outside. I'm not comfortable doing it outside because, you know, sometimes there are, my neighbors are outside or something. Like right now, no, they're not outside, but sometimes they're outside and, you know, uh, I'm not comfortable per se making it here outside. So I just uh, take it to the room, you know, I just... Uh, uh, I close this door, you know, the, the door here to my hut. And I even close the bathroom door because, you know, the, you know, if the neighbors are outside there or something, maybe that, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to be in a, as isolated as a place as I can. There's very good. Once I close the doors, I can't even hear those crickets outside anymore. Very good, uh, you know, soundproof system here. It's not really a soundproof system, but it seems that it actually conceals the sounds quite well. So then I feel comfortable and then I sit on my bed here or I lay, depending on the energy, depending on if I'm in the mood to sit or lay and I do this, okay? So you want to really, really be in a place uh, you're very comfortable in, okay? Very, very comfortable in, very important. So maybe your room, if that's the place you're most comfortable in speaking to imaginary friends, <laughs> okay? So... Uh, let's keep going here. So, very important to be comfortable in a place where you're comfortable. And then, shout out a name, a particular name. You could make up the name, they'll still answer. Or, just say, Spirit Guides, Spirit Guides, Spirit Guides. And, you know, there's several of them, okay? It's just Maximus happens to be the one I, you know, sort of 
resonate with the most and he sort of transmits and, and you know does the rest of the work to be done or reveals the guidance or just has sometimes just have a conversation you know like how you doing kind of thing uh, do you like coffee do you like tea that kind of stuff <laughs> okay so you call the name three times and then you feel a presence. If you don't feel a presence, then the communication hasn't yet been established. And once you establish the communication, it will be very easy. Very, very easy. But it, you know, the way you know your spirit guides are here is a presence. So close your eyes because, you know, they, you, know you don't want to be distracted by the, uh, by the external world. Close your eyes when you do this. So you close your eyes. You're in a comfortable place, sitting or laying. Doesn't matter. However you're comfortable. Comfort is the most important thing. And then, uh, and then, yeah. And then, uh. You feel a presence. Now, this presence could be, uh, in my case, it's always a playful, funny, giggly presence. Okay? Uh, and every time I try to even make an introduction, like, uh, you know, I try to be like, oh, you know, Maximus, you know, I really love you and thank you. And he'll be like, okay, cut the crap. What's good? What, what do you want? <laughs> right? Like, what's, what's on your mind? Kind of thing. You know, he's funny. He's funny like that. Very humorous. But you might feel a, a, a very... Uh, compassionate presence you know a very warm feeling in your body okay I know masculine's got more of a uh, Maximus has got more of a masculine presence to him uh, perhaps a more feminine spirit guide uh, may sort of give a little bit more of a warm type feeling and remember those spirit guides are beings like us on the journey uh, in the evolution in their own evolution of consciousness they're most of them are not enlightened so they're also got their own energies to balance and everything else and they happen to be serving as spirit guides at the moment for you so just remember that you know they're not enlightened beings they're not fully realized but they could really uh, you know uh, they could really illuminate you a lot okay and give you guidance they give you love and give you company so a lot of mosquitoes here only because I have these lights on so folks we might have to Mm, nah, let's keep them on. Okay, so you feel a presence. It could be very loving, very warm, very uh, humorous, playful, uh, and it's going to be a feeling inside your body. Okay, and once you feel that presence, you feel that warmth, or you feel that giggle, or that playfulness, or that smile, or something, you know you're in the presence of your spirit guide. And from here on, you could begin to speak to, the, to, the, to your spirit guides. Keep your eyes closed. Always keep your eyes closed. Uh, and usually for me, Maximus will sort of be on the right. Okay, so I'll actually be able to, be able to even uh, sort of pinpoint where the presence is. It'll be slightly to the right. Slightly to the right. Uh, so you could even sort of with the eyes closed see where exactly is that presence mostly felt in the room or around you, okay? And then if you feel the presence is there, you can begin to focus on the presence as you make the communication, as you begin to speak. So then from there on, you speak your heart, you just say whatever, whatever it is, right? It could be, look, I, uh, I need help with something, I need some guidance here and hear back the answer. Okay, you'll hear back the answer and whatever you hear immediately, that's that's the, the words being spoken by the guides. Okay, so like it's sort of you get in the flow of it. That's, you know, channels. You just it's a flow. It's hard for me to explain, but it's a flow. It's like imagine you're in a conversation with someone and the conversation is so in flow uh, that that's the person like you say, hey, how's it going? Oh, I'm good. How are you? Good. Uh, what did you eat today? Oh, I ate uh, pasta or uh, I ate some mangoes. Oh, and you know that person ate mangoes. That person ate pasta because they're right in front of you. They're speaking to you. You're in flow with the, with, the, with the conversation. It's the same thing with the guides. Okay, once you feel their presence and you establish the phone call connection, that's it. Whatever you hear, it's not, it's not, well, I guess you could say it's your own voice because it's one being playing out all these different roles, Right? But you and I are one being playing different roles. But when we're speaking together and we're in, inside the game, inside the illusion, then there's two different people. Okay? So as far as you're concerned, within the dream state, it's two different beings here. Okay? So whatever you hear, that's them. That's them talking to you. 
So you say, I need your help with something. You hear whatever they say, you know, dep depending on the mannerisms and the way the guys is. Like I said, my guide is just a, a sarcastic, uh, sarcastic asshole. And I love him for it. And uh, so I'll uh, sort of uh, put on the formalities in the beginning and, and, you know, be all formal and stuff and be like, all right, all right, all right, cut it, cut it, cut it. What's up? What's up? You know, <laughs> so you could offer some gratitude. You could offer love. Be like, thank you so much for all the guidance. Uh, if you want to start the conversation like that, it's always nice to start it like that, right? Unless, again, your guide is a sarcastic asshole. Uh, well, you could say thank you, uh, thank you for all the guidance, I love you, offer some sincere feelings you have, uh, and then you can begin the conversation. And if you have something you want to take up, some guidance, some things you want to ask, okay, like, uh, you know, can you uh, set me up in a situation with that cute chick where I could go and approach her, an approachable situation, stuff like that, right? Uh but I would do that kind of stuff, the asking when you have developed a strong connection, relationship with your guides. Okay, then you could begin, you know. But first, I think best is to just, again, establish the connection, feel the presence, uh, hear your guides speak to you, get used to them. And then, you know, you know, keep asking them stuff like, mm, yeah, me and Maximus, we talked yesterday, we talked about... Uh, I asked them uh, a question. I said, how can I be fulfilled? You know, give me some 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 tips here, some guidance. How can I be fulfilled? And he gave me a very interesting yet very practical answer. He said, be content with death. Meditate on death. Be content with the process of death, life and death. And I thought that was very interesting. You know, we had a, a, a back and forth and a conversation about that. And so you could just talk to them about stuff. If you have a question... You have something you want guidance on. They're called spirit guides for a reason. Uh, and uh, they'll be more than happy to answer. And once you uh, establish a connection, uh, it's very easy to, uh, to speak. I will definitely be hanging out with Maximus tonight. Uh, I'm in a pretty kind of a humorous, playful uh, mood. So maybe it'll be a, sort of a cas more of a casual conversation. So... Yeah, uh, it's very important, again, that once you're in, in speaking and once you're in the flow of it, that that indeed is your guide. That's not, you know, that so you take to whatever they say, That I mean, you're having a conversation. And sometimes you'll ask a question or something and they'll take their time answering. It's just like a, re an, an, a regular day-to-day -day physical world conversation. And you just sort of get in the flow and you hear them out. Sometimes they'll take some time before answering. They may even stop for a minute and then give you the answer or give you something or speak to you. So again, I think it's very, I find it very helpful that once I locate Maximus's most presence, which again to me is always slightly to the right, that I just completely lock on that with my eyes closed. I completely focus on that. And when I completely focus on that, it's like he's there and we're talking. We're having a, a regular average like back and forth. Like you have in this in this in this form in this in this density, and yeah, and then and then yeah. So I th I I find that helpful. Just feel the presence and lock your attention on that presence, and then that's it. You're in flow. You're in the flow of the conversation, and uh, once you're finished, again you say your goodbyes and uh, you say your thank yous, and you say your you know you say you know whatever. Thank you. I appreciate this. However. Uh, and now, again, once you finish the conversation, you say, thank you, I'll, I'll speak to you again, you'll feel the presence is sort of, it's gone because the spirit guides don't want you to be bothered too much. You know, they're always there for you. Uh, but, you know, like, they, you'll feel their presence when you call them. You know, when you know, it's like, again, they're friends, they're there, you know, you're not always 100% with your friends 24-7, so you just give them a call, right? Hey, how you doing? I haven't seen you in a while. It's the same thing with your guides. But they're always there in the back watching and, and, and guiding. They're always speaking to you. Terrence McKenna has a saying. Half of what you think... What is it? Uh, ha when you th half of what you're thinking is listening. So in a way, they're always there whispering thoughts in your head. And probably, you know, half of what you hear 
it could be them talking to you or it could be you know other entities talking to you but i really do like that you know that notion that when you think you're thinking it's not always thinking it, you're also listening okay so they're always there always speaking to you but it's really nice to be able to speak to them one on one and be able to actually get precise answers ask for favors every now and then you know um like I uh, sort of made a funny remark yesterday with, with Maximus. I told him, yeah, you know, we haven't spoken in maybe over a year, you know. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think you really enjoy me because every time I come to you, it's just for favors. And, uh, you know, he made a funny thing about it. But, you know, they, you know he told me very, you know, he told me like, look, I, I don't care. I love you either way. You know, if you could just come to me every two years for favors, I don't care. You know, uh you could ask for favors, you could ask for them to manipulate reality and if it's within their scope and if it's within, uh, if it is within your highest good, I suppose, they'll do something about it. You know, they'll, they'll do something. Like that incident when I asked them to, you know, put me in this position, you know, where I could approach the girl, you know, because I've kind of been eyeing her but I never had the chance. You know, that whole, po I mean, we never even went on a date. That whole point wasn't to find my soulmate. It was to show me through that particular event that, look, like, this shit is real. This shit's for real. And uh, I have uh, many, many stories, by the way. I, I think I should tell them again. I, because I, I told them in the old, old times of making uh, on this channel. Like, if you go the first 100 videos, now we've got over 800. I'll tell them again. I have this Melissa story. Some of you guys may be aware of it. Uh, but I have many stories like that, okay? It's not just one isolated story. So really, these guys are quite uh, capable, quite capable. They're sort of, they can, because they could see uh, outside of t the time, the physical 3D time, and they could see sort of past, present, and future, and they could sort of hack into the, the simulation. Um, so they can look at the possibilities and hack and stuff, and really, really incredible. Uh, like today, for example, I have a clock fast, so I, I don't look at the clock. And even on my phone, I got stickers here. I got rid of the s screensaver. So I, I, you know, I do just fine getting away without looking at the clock. But today, despite all of this, because now I've been talking, when, whenever I start to talk to, to the spirit guides, whenever I start to talk to Maximus, all kinds of weird coincidences start happening, man. All kinds of weird coincidences. So sometimes what happens is if my phone gets a little shake, the time appears. It's a weird thing. I got a Samsung S10. But it rarely happens. But if it gets like shaking in a way, the time appears. Well, guess what happened today? I picked up my phone. It got shaken in a way. Time actually appeared for the first time that morning, today in the morning. And it was 11.11. Now, what the hell? I'm on a clock fast. I got stickers here. I don't see the clock. You know, uh, I got rid of the screensaver. I don't, I, don't, I, some, I, don't, I don't have any way of seeing the clock. And I, I get away with not seeing the clock. And yet... Here we go. I just randomly pick up my phone. I don't even know why I picked it up. And it gets shaken in a way. The time appears and it's 11.11. <laughs> so even when I'm on a clock fast, I'm still seeing 11.11 like that. So it, it starts to happen to me like that in really weird ways when I actually pick up the phone and call. When I pick up the phone and I call and I talk. And I promised Maximus that I would sort of uh, speak to him uh, not just for favors anymore, but just to hang out, just to talk, have a conversation. Because remember, they're also beings who are on their own path and they're not enlightened. Most of them are not enlightened. They're not fully enlightened. They're, you know, maybe higher and higher spirits. They're, you know, on a higher part of the, 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 the evolution. And so they choose to be in this position where they help. Uh, but again, you know, they, so they also like to talk and converse and, uh, you know, uh, so yeah, so you know, I, it's very very nice. That's your imaginary friends. That's the, the 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 kids. All the kids have imaginary friends. That's their guides. So hopefully this video helped you and was entertaining. And I really got a feeling that uh, Maximus put some input. He ha he definitely had some input in this video, uh, with all the sort of uh, you know humor that's going on here. So. Thank you to all the Patreons for your uh, continuous support. You guys are awesome. I love you. I love every single one of you. 
And uh, thank you to everybody who makes one-time donations on PayPal. You guys are awesome. If you would like to be part of the Patreon family, a couple of bucks a month, $24 a year, come on. Get off your lazy ass right now. Get off your lazy ass. Get your credit card. Put in the information. Let's rock and roll, baby. Okay? And if you would like to just make one-time donations, you can also do that via PayPal. Love you guys. And until next time, may the force be with you.